Well, finally, John, if you were to address a young geoscientist beginning his or her career, mm. what advice would you have for them today? Well, um, I look at my own career and I look at the careers of a number of the younger, bright air scientists who we employed in Indonesia run the projects. I look at my middle son who is also an earth scientist and I look at the challenges that face earth scientists because of the, the lifestyle and the issues that draw them away from, if you like, the normal communities that they might otherwise operate in. What I would say to um, a young earth scientist is there's no substitute for experience. There's no substitute for a field experience. So every time somebody offers you the chance to go and see something different, to do something that might seem a little bit unusual first off, take it and grab it, and don't fret too much about where it might lead. My own life has been filled with opportunities that um, came up often quite unexpectedly out of the blue. The Antarctic experience at the beginning was one that you couldn't have possibly predicted. Uh, going to work with the, the the geological survey on the Tongariro project it was amazing and after three years as a young geologist I couldn't imagine how things would ever get better than that. Well they did. Um, after my first stint in, in Indonesia I was quite lukewarm on going back to Indonesia with Newmont and yet Minahasa and Badahuja came out of that experience. So um, don't, I, I would say to people don't try to second guess too much what it might, what, what it might lead to and what might happen. If there's an opportunity to get some really first-rate field experience, then then take it and see what happens afterwards. But what I what I would also say is that if I have any real real regrets, is that if you look at some of the the bright, eager, talented explorers that came to work for Newmont in Indonesia, um, they took themselves, if you like, out of social circulation for the prime years of their of the early part of their career. A, a number of them didn't find their partners in life until quite a lot later in life. And um, you know, one of the real challenges, and the same thing happened with my son, who's just got married at the age of 39. Um, one of the, the real challenges in this business is because the lifestyle takes you away from home, um, it's very hard to lead a normal social life when you're never there. And these days, young women, when they find out their young man is a earth scientist, or young men, when they find their young girlfriend is an earth scientist, are going to say, well, what does that mean? Well, it means I'm going to be away in the field for two, three, four weeks, maybe longer. If you're in Canada and you've only got a four-month window when you... That's right. You if know. you're in Canada, it's the whole field season. Yeah. And when I was going through that process... Um, you were away for a minimum of six weeks and sometimes it was two months and in some regimes it was three months. So you had no social life. Um, and that is, I think, one of the reasons why people opt out of the earth science business and elect a lifestyle uh, chain. In my view of it is, you, if you have expectations or visions of being an ace geoscientist, the more rocks you see, the better you are. The more ore bodies you see, the better you are. The more variety of experience you see, the better you are. Um, what I would encourage people who know they're going to be doing that is to find their soulmate in life early, um, preferably somebody who's willing to travel, who's got professional skills or talents that are, that are marketable and portable skills, um, because then you can follow your partner to wherever he or she might go you've got something to offer in the partnership when you get there and making the move and, and going to live in some weird and wonderful places isn't that much harder to do. Um, and I would say, because Linda and I have done that in the 45 years we've been married, um, the opportunity for some fantastic personal experiences uh, in some pretty strange and interesting places has been worth what might have perceived to have been uh, the hardship along the way. But um, that's, how, that's what I would say to people, don't let lifestyle get in the way of your chosen profession.